Today we will discuss X-linked A gamma globulinemia, the first primary immunodeficiency to be identified. It was described in 1952 by Dr. Ogden Burton and thus is sometimes referred to as Burton's A gamma globulinemia. XLA is an inherited immunodeficiency caused by mutations in the gene encoding Burton tyrosine kinase, BTK for short. XLA patients lack the ability to produce antibodies, which increases their susceptibility to infection. Now let's meet our patient. Our patient is a three-year-old boy who presented with repeated severe bacterial infections, initially developing sepsis associated with meningitis at six months of age. In the following years, he suffered from an episode of acute pneumonia, pharyngitis, and recurrent bouts of otitis media, and required intravenous antibiotics on multiple occasions. General physical and cognitive development were normal. However, on examination, the patient had small tonsils, no evident lymph nodes, and a mild splenomegaly. Family. He is the second of two children. His brother is eight years of age and has no history of recurrent infections. Both parents are healthy, but his mother's brother died at six months of age due to a systemic infection. Initial investigations revealed a normal full blood count. First immunological investigations showed a low to absent level of immunoglobulins. Furthermore, peripheral lymphocyte subset analysis found a near absence of CD19 positive B cells, while the other lymphocyte subsets were within normal range. In vitro response to T cell mitogen was normal. However, there was no response to a polysaccharide vaccine challenge. So what are the possible diagnoses for this patient? The three-year-old boy suffered from severe bacterial infections since the first year of life and had panhypogamma globulinemia. The history of severe bacterial infections indicated a possible selective defect in humoral immunity. Severe combined immune deficiency, SCID, was excluded due to the normal level of T lymphocytes and demonstration of normal T cell mitogen and antigen responses. The absence of peripheral B cell excluded a transient hypogammaglobulinemia of infancy or common variable immunodeficiency, CVID, which is usually diagnosed after four years of age. The family history was suggestive of an excellent inheritance pattern. The patient was assessed for mutations in the BTK gene associated with X-linked inheritance, as well as mutations in other genes responsible for auto, um, autosomic recessive forms of agammaglobinemia. Confirming a diagnosis of XLA requires molecular studies to identify the defect in the BTK gene or, alternatively, a defective BTK protein expression. In our patient, panel sequencing was performed. The patient harbored a missense mutation in the BTK gene caused by a substitution of a single amino acid. The boy was diagnosed with XLA. As for his relatives, the patient's mother had a non-random X inactivation while there was no mutation found in the brother. BTK codes for a cytoplasmic thyrosine kinase protein, which acts as a signal transducer in the final stages of B cell maturation. To better understand the clinical manifestations of our patient, we need to delve into the biology of B cells. B cell development occurs in several stages in both bone marrow and peripheral lymphoid tissues. Each stage is marked by various gene expression patterns and Ig heavy and light chain gene loci rearrangements, resulting in the generation and surface expression of the pre-B cell receptor and finally, a mature B cell receptor capable of binding antigens. When the pre-B cell receptor is expressed, the transmission of its signal leads to the adapter proteins, Blink and BTK, that's Burton tyrosine kinase. BTK is a member of the thyrosine kinase family. It contains a pH domain that binds phosphatidylinositol triphosphate, PIP3, the PIP3 binding induces BTK to phosphorylate phospholipase C, which in turn hydrolyzes PIP2, resulting in two second messengers, install triphosphate, IP3, and diacylglycerol, DAG, which then modulates the activity of downstream proteins during B-cell signaling. BTK is crucial in the transition between the pro and the pre-B-cell stage. In fact, the pre-B cell receptor signaling transmitted through BTK indicates that the receptor has been correctly edited. 
Consequently, a B cell inhibits further immunoglobulin heavy chain gene loci rearrangement, promotes exclusion and proliferation, and starts the arrangement of the light chain. The effects of the mutation on BTK is to block B cell differentiation at the pro B cell stage, leading to a virtual absence of B lymphocytes and very low or undetectable levels of immunoglobulin. As a result, XLA patients develop serious and potentially life-threatening infections. Pneumonia, recurrent otitis media, and sinusitis are the most common clinical manifestations. Osteomyelitis, septic arthritis, sepsis, and central nervous system infections can be found in patients who are not on immunoglobulin replacement therapy. Infections are usually caused by encapsulated pyogenic bacteria, microorganisms that are usually subjected to opsonization by antibodies as a primary host defense. Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenza B, and Pseudomonas account for the majority of infections. In addition, Salmonella and Campylobacter species may cause gastroenteritis as well as extraintestinal infections. Patients with XLA can experience chronic diarrhea, mainly due to parasitic infections, especially with Giardia. Not just that, but these patients are susceptible to enteroviruses too, including echovirus. The associated clinical manif manifestations of enteroviral infections include chronic meningoencephalitis, chronic hepatitis, or myositis. Other viral, fungal, and parasitic infections are uncommon. XLA patients are at risk of complications from the disease itself. Complications usually arise from infections, which can become recurrent. For example, repeated episodes of pneumonia can culminate in chronic lung disease and lead to bronchiectasis. The later treatment is initiated, the more difficult it is to eradicate the causative organism and prevent systemic spread of the infection to joints and vital organs. Other complications include increased risk of malignancy, inflammatory conditions, and autoimmune disease. What are the treatment options for a patient with XLA? Immunoglobulin replacement therapy is the cornerstone of treatment. IgG is administered to patients with XLA by intravenous or subcutaneous means at a monthly dose of 400 to 600 mg per kg. IG therapy reduces the incidence of respiratory and other systemic infections. It helps prevent the development of long-term pulmonary damage and reduces morbidity and mortality in patients, but does not cure the biological defect that XLA patients have. Antibiotic therapy. Prompt antibiotic therapy is essential for any suspected infection. It minimizes the duration and severity of the infections. In some instances, Prolonged oral or intravenous antibiotic therapy may be necessary to eradicate the said infection. Antibiotic prophylaxis can be useful in reducing the number and severity of infections in those with recurrent episodes despite adequate immunoglobulin replacement. Vaccinations. Patients with XLA do not generate significant antibody responses to prophylactic immunization. However, it's not clear if killed viral and bacterial vaccines can provide some additional protection by generating T-cell mediated immune responses. Of note, live viral vaccines are contraindicated with those at XLA, as they can lead to disseminated infection. For example, a poliovirus infection after the live poliovirus vaccine. Gene therapy. Research studies exploring gene therapy as a definitive cure for the treatment of XLA have been conducted in mice, but it's not clear when this type of treatment may be available for humans. In summary, X-linked A gammaglobulinemia is a primary humoral immunodeficiency caused by a defect in the signaling transduction molecule Britain tyrosine kinase, which is required for normal B cell development. Clinical symptoms are generally noted in the first two years of life and include recurrent bacterial infections of the respiratory tract and increased susceptibility to enteroviruses. Because of its excellent inheritance pattern, XLA patients are male, while females might be healthy carriers. De novo mutations of BTK can also occur. 
Relevant laboratory findings for XLA are very low or undetectable immunoglobulin levels and very low or absent CD19 positive B cells. Severe neutropenia can also be observed. The diagnosis should be confirmed by molecular studies to identify the defect in the BTK gene or defective BTK protein expression. If a mutation in BTK cannot be identified in a male with a gamma globulinemia, autosomal recessive forms of the disease should be ruled out. Immunoglobulin replacement therapy is the cornerstone of treatment for XLA, together with prompt antibiotic treatment for infections. In the future, other lines of therapy could include hemopoietic stem cell transplantation as a definitive cure or gene therapy, which remains a more distant goal. Thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoyed the video.